So again, we uh, appreciate you coming out and enjoying uh, joining Insurance Advisors Direct and Don Runji. Uh, this is part two. Uh, we do have a third part coming up in two weeks. So keep an eye out for that invitation. Uh, with the invitation you received to this as well as part one, uh, there was a uh, uh, invitation to part three. So feel free to go ahead and uh, register for that. Again, that will be in two weeks. So uh, thank you, Don, for joining us. We'll be uh, introducing you in just a moment. Uh, if any of you do have questions, you can always feel free throughout Don's presentation to type those into the chat box. We will either try to respond through that chat box or uh, at the end, we will be taking questions. With our system, the nice part about it is if you have questions and you'd like to chat with Don directly, hold those questions till the end. Uh, at the end, I will be able to unmute those who raised their hand and we'll be able to answer your questions directly uh, and give you a moment to, to ask questions with the lead guru, Don Runji. So again, thanks, Don, for joining us today. I'm going to go ahead and turn this over to you. Don is going to get into, again, part two, which talks more about how to best, more effectively work the lead you have, how to mine your book of business for more leads, and again, how to turn those leads into more sales. So very important topic, I know, for all of us in this industry uh, who rely on leads to grow our business and to continue to uh, increase our sales. So we have a great session ahead of us. And with that, Don, I'm going to turn over control to you right now, and uh, they'll be able to see you if you turn on your video. Um, uh, we'll get my video back again. I, I, never, I didn't turn it off, so you okay, got to go back here. Got to accept. Yep, go ahead, accept. Yep. Check your video, and it looks Can't like it's off right now. Yeah. But, uh, there it there is right there. Go. Got You're it. With us. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good. And maybe there's some people in the afternoon, I'm not sure, but uh, in Dallas, Texas, where I'm at, Plano, Texas, we've got about uh, a little after 11. And thank you for taking time out today. Uh, we'll try to get at least one idea you can walk away with today for sure. At the end, we're going to make you a special offer in our training material. And I always say that because you can always go to our website, leadguru.com, and you can see the normal pricing. And we do substantially do that for Jason. We reduce it, and you might as well take advantage of the sale. I mean, this is like a Costco. And get more for your money. So anyway, prospecting strategies. Uh, prospecting strategies, it means a lot of different stuff. I was preparing this and thought about it. Prospecting is always the main thing that we always talk about when we say we're having a problem. Because whatever, whatever it comes to, I'm not making enough sales. It's usually because you don't have enough appointments. It usually isn't the closing effect of selling. It's usually the fact that the products will sell themselves if the person feels at all they have any kind of need. So if you got a need, you got a lead. You don't have a need, you don't have a lead. You just got a name and address with excuse. So we'll go into that. I gave you my family background last time for those people that have an interest in that. Uh, I think that that is, uh, again, I'm, I'm from Chicago, moved here in 74, lived here in Plano, Texas since 1974. Cut my teeth in the insurance business in Chicago on the South Side. Selling life insurance to college seniors back a long time ago at Illinois Institute of Technology. That's where I sold back over near De La Salle High School, where I went. Graduated from Northern and Western, got married. Uh, 52 years now in the insurance business, 52 years in marriage. We got uh, six grandchildren, three children, all live here in Frisco, Texas, next to us. So we're in uh, running around. And all the stuff I've done has always been on activity and recruiting. So let's get to it. I want to talk to you about prospecting and leads. We always turn about turning 65s. You know what? And, and, and again, I would say this to him, preface the comment. I did a series, oh, I think it was a week or two ago. I'm working on a program called Why Not Sell 63 and 64s and Then You'll Own the 65s. Probably will be one of my new training videos coming out. <clears throat> but really, the 65s are just a figment of your imagination. It's kind of like the Boston Marathon. You line up with 50,000 agents and everybody wants to tax somebody turning 65. The mail goes out, two, three, four million pieces a week. Everybody hovers around like you're like it's hunting season. Nothing wrong with that. But if you really want to start prepping the 65s, I think there's a couple of things you can do. One way we find very effective is mailing out 20 letters. And I would change that to 20 postcards. The reason I say 20 postcards is the trick to direct mail, if there is one, is getting people to open the envelope. Well, you can send a postcard out, it's already open, so they're going to look at it because they turned it over. 
So the trick is the postcard probably is less expensive. It's more informal. It's not very common, which means, again, they're turning 65. And all that mail they're going to get from all these companies are usually an 8 by 11 uh, uh, window envelopes or closed-in envelopes. And, and it's packed with stuff. The little invitation you want to do to 65 is to be a little bit different than everybody else. So you can do that and discuss what parts are using the phone. Well, you can take things out and put a couple of power phrases in there saying, hey, congratulations. You got two birthdays this year. We'd like to celebrate your first birthday with you. Please send it back. It's very important because it's going to impact. It's going to impact your senior years regarding your health care. Call me now. You can tell them to call you. So what you do is you can go after the turning 65s. You can go after the turning 65s that have phone numbers. You can go after the turning 65s where you don't have two phone numbers. Why not work some of the 65s where you don't have a phone number? Because if you buy a mailing list, there's only about 150 to 180 names out of 1,000 when you order it that are going to have a phone number. Everybody's working off the phone number. Why not work off the what I call, and I'm going to talk later, late responders? Get after them. Why spend extra money on that? Those people are just as good. So what you have to have is a phone approach. You have to make some sense out of your card. So if you go after the do not calls and they send you the card back, now you can talk to them and they will send some cards back. So you haven't lost anything at all. It's like having uh, an extra fish that you caught on another line. You have two poles in the water rather than one. So I would look at that. But if we strictly said, let's just call the turning 65s. Now, somebody asked me the other day, and in fact, this morning too, talking to Daryl. So I mean, you make door knocks. We're, people are making door knocks. I get calls every week in the training I'm doing that agents are making door knocks. And it's a choice. Uh, Mr. Joe, Karen, Don, would you like, we, we really are being very flexible during these, these tough times. We've got permission to either do a door, come to your house, or you can come to our office, or I can take care of you on the phone. So you got three choices. We've expanded the choices of getting in front of someone today or actually talking to someone today. So that sense of urgency. Now, in order to get their attention, it's not going to just be price on the phone. It's not going to be like, let me give you a quote on our plan. We've really got low prices. Well, you know, that's true and that's not true. In the 65 market, there's some companies that buy business. They go lowball the price and then they jack the rates up 20, 30, 40 percent in three years. I don't I'm not trying to tell you how to sell. But the point is, there's what we call stable, stable rates and unstable rates. All that's fine in a selling environment. We're just talking about getting appointments. So what we use is the Medicare and You book. I've said that before. I'm not going to move from, we're now over 19,000 appointments on our phone approach using Medicare and You book to 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70s. We're using the Medicare and You book. Why? Because the government keeps using it. And a, and a senior is told the government's going to provide part of your health care. Well, the senior thinks it's all their health care. It's only 80% of it. The Medicare and You book is very good at 120 some pages to tell people we're not going to cover very much, and you can pick up this other 20 percent uh, from somebody. So everybody's after that 20 percent sale. You know, my point is you've got all the other products that you probably merchandise or offer: final expense, life insurance, annuities, all those other things that they probably had parts of those benefits when they had group plans. So. What you're doing with the Medicare and You book is you're talking about the umbrella, Medicare. You're not talking about MedSup. You're not talking about Medicare Advantage. On the phone, that puts you into a product discussion, which you really don't want to get into if you don't have to, unless you're doing virtual selling. But on the first appointment, you're just trying to book the appointment. And the Medicare and You book really is a government endorsement to the senior who does not know what's covered and not covered by Medicare. It's a government endorsement to tell you very nicely buried in 128 pages that we are not going to cover much of anything you've ever had. You're basically on your own. So the script is very powerful to turn you 65. And basically on that lead, the way you work it, you can send out a mailer or you don't even have to send out a mailer. We're not sending mailers out. We're saving the postage. We're just getting on the phone. We're setting up and making calls. Do we have unlisted phone, uh, phone numbers that don't work? People don't answer the phone. Uh, disconnect. All of that's part of the program. There is no perfect time or perfect list in America. The best ones are usually validated against voter registration, uh, um, uh, date of birth information, verified information. And it still can be inaccurate because people change all the time. 
especially getting rid of landlines and going to cell phones. So your, your frustration is you want everybody to answer. You want everybody to have a phone number. You want everybody to be nice. Well, I do too. I want to be six foot tall and have hair. So you got to understand it is what it is. You got to work with what you got. Okay. If you only got one ball to play the game, when it goes foul, somebody better chase it. And you just got to work with what you got. And we're working with what we have. And the ratios are about 3.5 to one or less. 3.5 people contacted, one people booked an appointment. We've been a little under three now for a lot of the new agents. Script is real simple. Hi, Karen, this is Don. I'm a licensed professional with XYZ Insurance Company here in the St. Louis area. Hey, I just got one question to ask you. Hey, were you lucky enough to get this Medicare? And were you lucky enough to get this uh, red, white, and blue book from the government this year? Or they forget you. Huh? You know, no. Did you get it? No. Oh, and I don't talk until I get an answer. No. Well, Bob, I'm sorry about that. It's called the Medicare and You book. Are you sure? Because the government mails it out. No. Well, I apologize, but you know what? You're not alone. There's probably nine out of 10 people I talk with that are seniors didn't get the book some way this year. I don't know if it's a pandemic or what's happening, but they didn't get it. So that's why I'm following up to call you. The government sends the booklet, and it's my job as a trained professional to explain your rights, your options, and some options that are important options and benefits that you probably didn't even know you had when you retired. Bob, did you exercise any or all of your extended health care and retirement options when you retired? No. Well, Bob, that's the reason we got to get with you. It won't take me long unless you get a lot of questions. Now, is there anybody else in your household that's eligible for Medicare? Oh, my wife. Good. It'd be great to have her there because I don't want to have to call you back twice and I don't want to have to come over twice. Is that okay with you? Yes, it is. Great. Now, you can either come see you, you can come to their office, or we can do this over the phone. So, Bob, which is most convenient for you? Which is most, most, oh, I'd rather do it on the phone. That's great. I've got an opening tomorrow at 9 o'clock or Wednesday at 8. That's it. That is it. That is getting over 19,000 appointments booked with neophyte second day agents in a classroom with an hour's worth of training using the material that's on our script, that, that's in our package. It's in the offer today. All right, so that's the 65. So you got options to do letters. You got options to go after the non reply, uh, the do not call list that are 65s. You got an option to call the list where you got a number to call for 65. All that kind of stuff. You can invite them to seminars if you want. The letter will work again the same way. We we'll use Medicare and you in our letter. We we'll invite them or postcard if you want to do seminars. If you're still, well, it's not good to do seminars right now in most cases. So that's the 65. That's a very popular lead. Um, that's the one a lot of people like to work with. Okay. All right. Let's see if we get the next one here. All right. Prospecting. Senior list. Do not call senior list. Again, I love the do not call list because I don't mind sending out a postcard or sending out 20 letters a week or 20 postcards a week and then following up on the ones that call me. And some will call you back. And it depends what you put in the copy. What I would do on that, I'd send a postcard out or a mailer and I'd say, hey, Karen is done. Very important I get with you. There's some important changes that we got to get over on Medicare, especially when it comes to your extended health care and retirement benefits that most seniors didn't even know they, had, they were available for at 65 or at 866. By the way, give me a call at this number today before such and such a time, or I'll assume you just want me to drop by this week. Let me tell you, they call you back, all right? They, they call you back. So I can't call them. They're on a do not call us, but they can call me. And when I use that kind of verbiage, you're going to get a you're going to get percentage of people that will call you back and you're going to open up a file that unless you're doing door knocks, you really can't contact. Now, if I'm going to do a door knock, the way to work this lead strategy wise is go to the door with your Medicare and you book is my suggestion because that's eight by 11 in color. They can see it. It's big. They're going to focus on it. And, and that's your excuse to make this call. You're dropping by to see if they got their book. That's the call. So you knock on the door. You're in the area. Hi, Ms. Jones. You back off six feet. Get down with your mask on. Say, hey, Karen, this is, my name is Don. By the way, did you get my card the other day to let you know I was going to drop by if I didn't hear from you? Oh, I I, 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 I don't remember. That's okay. That's, I follow up with everybody because sometimes the mail, you know, during these times is late or it's not working with the pandemic. I understand that. It's important that I come by. That's why I took my time in these tough conditions to come out to see you. By the way, did you get your red, white, and blue book from the government this year. No, this one right here is called the Medicare and you, you didn't get, it's important. This is what they expect you to read 
and understand to make all your insurance decisions now that you're retired. So I don't have time right now, but I, I got an opening tomorrow at nine o'clock or I got one on Tuesday at five. Like to get together. By the way, is there anybody else eligible for Medicare in your household? A husband, great. Like to have them here so I don't have to come back twice and bother you. So I'll need about 15 to 20 minutes unless you've got a lot of questions. I'm not going to be here long unless you've got questions. By the way, Tuesday or Wednesday. All right. So so you, you, you've you got the fact that you've used the do not call list to your advantage. And the reason you could also say when you come by, the reason I'm stopping by is, Mr. Jones, you're probably on a do not call list. That's why I sent a card. Are you on the list? Oh, great. You should be on that list. I really think you should be. You can't trust all these pushy salespeople that come by unannounced. So I can use that. And we're an old fashioned company. We've been making house calls a long time, Mrs. Jones. We still think a person to person is in, a, in this environment. Soft touch is more important than high tech. Do you have a minute? No, I don't either. I work by appointment only. I've got opening tomorrow at nine o'clock and 11 o'clock to come back to make sure you know exactly what your rights and options are before some of those options run out. And I don't want you getting mad at me. Okay, so now you got a strategy. You've got a strategy to work. The list that are sitting there, it costs you a penny a name, penny a name that you could turn into thousands of dollars. And you're doing things that the average agent is not willing to do. They want to sit in their rocking chair and have a person, and pardon my expression, call them up, come by, bring the rabbi, bring the priest, bring the urine specimen, and come in and say, would you sell me? This is a proactive type endeavor. We are first responders. We are mentally the people that need to go out and find the people. We're the ones that get out there. We're part of the first responder group. We talked about that in the initial seminar. We're the ones that are Olympians. We should be practicing perfectly every day. And if you don't have a lot of activity, you're going to have what? Reduced activity, which goes into a mental state of nobody wants to buy. Everybody's bought it. Our prices are too high. I need another product. And you already got plenty of products through IDA with Jason. You got you got the best of the best. So product's not the problem. Don't blame it on the product. Opportunity is not the problem. Potential income is not the problem. The challenge is you mentally being prepared to have a strategy to contact so many people a day, no matter what happens. And you can do it by phone. You can do it in person in some case if you're comfortable. You can do it a lot of different ways. But you've got to be proper prior preparation prevents poor performance. You have got to be prepared to do these approaches. And I make them sound real easy. You know, I've done it for 50 years, 52 years. So eventually it ought to get easier for me. I can actually ride a bike yet without training wheels. And I haven't done that in a while. But I learned how. It took me a long time, but I got it finally. So that's two two, two types of leads. Um, let me get this roll up over here. Oh, I'm losing my track over here. So six. All right, let me get seven. All right, Colonial Pen, you don't want those. That's not the right one. That, that's a separate deal that we're doing. Okay, now let's take the non-responder list. And I'm going to go to the existing policy list after that. But let's take the non-responder list. The non-responder list is a great list. You don't have a slide for it. It's a great list to work on. Why? You mail out a thousand pieces of mail. 18 people send a card back, 20 people send a card back. You got 980 people or whatever you got to contact. And they are not non-responders, by the way. Let me explain why I know that. Years ago, there was a company called I Rent America. I worked with them as a consultant. They're the ones who compile all the dates of birth in America. They got 186 million dates of birth, dates of birth in America. And, and they, they have them, and those dates of birth are pure. They're the ones that they're the, they're the list compiler. And they have, they're the list compiler. They're the ones that do all the compiling of all the lists when it comes to date of birth. And they're, they're great at it. Now, date of birth is a very important piece of information that you have to have to verify a good lead. So when you get this non-responder list and you're in there, the non-responder list is a late responder list. Here's how I found out. We took 1,000 pieces of mail on an envelope and mailed it out to 1,000 seniors. We got back 20, 20 cards. They took the same list the next week, mail it out again in a different envelope, same copy, and got 20 responders, and there were no duplications. And I lost money on this. I'm going to do it a third week in a row, and I'm going to send a postcard out this time to the same people with the same message, and I'll get the same response rate. Did it a third time, three weeks in a row, and got one duplication. The person really wanted to buy and still got 20 responders. And they told me that if we mail that list every single week for a year, 
98% of everybody on that list would actually send a card back during that year. And they proved it. So timing is what I'm talking about. So just because somebody didn't send a card back, it doesn't mean they're not interested. The card might have thrown it away. Maybe there's a third thought and they put it aside, can't find it. Maybe they just put it on their file intending to do that and other problems came up. So it's not a, it's not a non-response. It's a late responder. So the late responder list, it's already been preheated. It's already been preconditioned. It's already been pre-mailed. They've been pre-contacted, not just by your mailing, by thousands of other mailings disturbing that person. So they've been preheated. You just got to get prepared with your approach to work that pe that that type of lead. And you got to get your mindset on the strategy of working that lead. So when you're going in, a, in, the, in the mindset, I keep hitting that with you guys and gals, because it is the breakdown. The mindset's the breakdown. What ends up happening is we get to the point where we think the lead's a real problem and you're talking to a piece of paper. So let's get our mindset with that. So take that strategy increase the number of people you can stay in the same area for a while if you keep mailing and only getting 10 cards back or 12 you're driving 200 miles you're driving 75 and 100 miles that's that's not smart so cluster your activity around where the other people now you may use the non-responder list as a drop-by list you can use it as a drop-by list the same way again if you're going out there okay so now that's that's the part so don't give up on that type of thing because when you get to the door you could go back and say, hey, Karen, this is Don. I'm a licensed professional with XYZ Insurance Company. I'm working here in the, excuse me, Chicago area. Hey, I want to stop on by and I want to make sure I had, I hadn't gotten your, I hadn't seen your card come back yet, but we've had so much interest and so many people responding to us. Our company asked us to get out in person to let the people know we didn't forget about you. Now, did you get your Medicare and you book this year? Your red, white, and blue book? No, I didn't. Well, I got a copywriter. You can see it. By the way, it's important because the government wants you to make your decisions since you've retired from this book, telling you what's covered and not covered. My job is to point out those options that might run out for you. Whether you want to do anything or not, that's fine. By the way, do you have a minute? No, I don't either. I work by appointment only. Got an opening Tuesday. Got one Wednesday. Same. I use the same thing on everybody we're going to work. You know why? Because they're all seniors. They're basically all the same. The only thing that makes them different, maybe, is, is their amount of money, their thought philosophy. But as far as the target, there's somebody that's over 65 or 65 or over. So that's my target. So I can say the same thing to that target, regardless how and what happened. I could have said, by the way, I could have not mailed them and did the same thing because they're not going to remember the mail because they get so much mail. They don't remember one to another, especially 65. Did you ever look at how much mail comes in? bombarded from insurance companies. I actually filled up two shopping bags when I was 65, two shopping bags with just direct mail that I got. I quit doing it after about a month and a half, two shopping bags, just wanted to see how many. So you're telling me that, you know, you, you think they're going to really go through all this material and read everything and they're not going to do it, but you can use that advertising. You can use the fact that they did get something. They can't deny that. And it's, Oh yeah, I think I got it. Uh, they're going to say, yeah, they got some mail. They get it every day. Don't they don't sort it out though? Remember it's you. So that's one you don't want to pass up on. That's a real powerful source of business that in my opinion, we missed the boat on here in the insurance industry. We just missed the boat on that. And, and we can talk more about that a little later when you ask me questions. Talk about another one. Let's talk about direct mail. I know some of you out there order lists and names and you you buy them. You drop a thousand pieces of mail or two thousand pieces of mail. You pick out your zip code, your income range. And by the way, let's talk about income. Nobody has exact income. Nobody in the United States of America has exact income on an individual. Your tax return even says approximate income. And the government does not know your exact income. You do things in cash. You don't do certain things here. That regards, I'm not saying you're cheating anybody, but nobody can give you an exact income figure for Don Runge or Joe Smith or or Jason McClellan, they only give you an income range, like 10,000 to 30,000. That means there could be a house worth 200,000 in that same area where the other houses are 150,000. There's no exact science to this. It's an indicator, it's just an indicator. And, and it really doesn't have much bearing because people don't buy with an income range. People don't even buy People don't even buy based on how much money they made. They buy it with a need, desire. They find the money. So don't let that throw you away. 
oh yeah, I want to get people that, you know, you know, so, and when you're going to your list vendor, be careful that you don't let that get over your head. Let them direct you because they know what they're doing. They know by the type of mailer you want to do, the parameters you ought to use to get the best return. Okay. And you're going to get some people low income, some people high income, some people minute. It just varies. There's no perfect science when it comes to that. All right. And zip codes, in some cases, if you come to a high income zip code like here in Plano or in North Dallas, you're going to have a pretty good idea that the houses are probably 300,000 plus or 400,000 plus that the person in persons may have enough money. But that doesn't mean they got money, by the way. There's people that, that have mansions that are one paycheck away from bankruptcy, borrowing everybody, Peter, Paul, James, John. And they're, they're broke, basically. And, and the banks are chasing these guys are one week away from losing everything. So it doesn't, if I made $300,000, that doesn't mean I got money. Depends on your spending habits. A person making 50000 can have more net money to buy from you than a person making 300000 So don't let all that stuff get you. I said, you don't know until you go. My philosophy is you don't know until you go and you know about 50% of what you need to know when you get there. Don't, don't let those figures throw you off. So on direct mail, you send them out and you order your 1,000 names. Get back your 10 or 12 cards. What you start to do is this, and, and, and it can be a mistake. You start to get on a telephone making calls like, hi, Mrs. Smith, this is Don Wilson. I'm a licensed agent CLU here in the Chicago area. By the way, I see here that I got this card back from you, and you wanted to, you check the box regarding Medicare. I'd like to, uh, well, you interested in Medicare? Yeah, I'd like to give you a quote. You might as well just save all that. Just save all that. You know, not, not in MAs. I'm talking about non-MA stuff here, okay? Not, there's no reference to MA. MA is not part of my conversation today. So regular, regular Medicare prospects. And what you do, whether they come off on TV, or they're a web lead or an internet lead, these are response type leads. Somebody sent a card back, sent a mailer back, phoned in somewhere. So those are all in the same bucket. Now, I don't care if you got them in a web or you got them in a net or you got them in a poll. I don't care where they came from. They responded. So you can treat all responders alike when you have an approach. So how do you do that? You have to call them if you're going to use the phone within 90 days of the date of that card or the $10,000 fine if you try to phone them after that if you don't have an active relationship. That's the law. Now, I'm just covering it from whatever you want to do with that. That's the law. And I'm trying to abide by it. So that's good, though, because it gives you a sense of urgency to work those cards right away and don't put them in your cars and hermetically seal them for a rainy day. The, the, the action, Jackson, the quicker you can work the card, the better off you're going to be. Now, you got to be very careful on the telephone because you're going to get talked into talking product and quoting. That means they're taking control out of your hands. That's not the way the lead is designed. A direct mail lead is designed for actually a house to call, a face-to-face -face call. Now, if you can't do that, then the option is to make the phone call. But you got to understand, you got to say very little, less is better, and you don't give everything away until you get into a more of a presentation. All right? So what you can do, if you can work the door knock, you take those and route those cards around your regular appointments and you drop by the house, knock on the door, back off six feet. Hey, Karen, this is Don. Hey, listen, glad I caught you home. Hey, I'm a licensed professional with XYZ Company in the area. And with this pandemic and healthcare retirement crisis, I've been a little bit behind. I didn't want to forget about you, but I want to come by and find out what you had when you sent this card back. And you don't say another, what did you have in mind when you sent this card back? And they go, well, let me see it. Well, here, you can take a look at it, Ms. Jones. I know you can't come out and look through the door. Uh, I don't remember sending a card. Don't worry. People have, have it takes four to five weeks before the card comes back. Maybe your husband sent it in or someone from your family. My job is the minute a card comes back, I have to change my schedule, get out, and get to you guys immediately. That, that, is, a, that is what we call a prime time person I need to talk to right away. So since you took the interest, we have to get out there. By the way, don't worry about remembering, Ms. Jones. I'll ask you some questions when we get together. I'm sure we'll jog your memory. By the way, do you have a minute? That's a powerful thing you want to do when you want to stop talking and book the appointment. You get that line memorized. Do you have a minute? They can only say yes or they can say no. Both are good answers. Yes, I do. Oh, gee whiz, I'm really kind of short for time right now. 
is there anybody else in your household eligible for Medicare? Yeah, my husband. Is he home? You know what? I'm going to need a little time. Do you have a little time right now where I can, I, I, maybe I can jump in here and take care of it right now? You have a lot of questions? No. Okay, may I come in? You can do it that way or say, look, I'm sorry. I just want to let you know we didn't forget about you. With this health care crisis, I'm about two months behind. It's not looking any better. I can't make two calls. I can't call back on that or anything else. But I do have a cancellation tomorrow at 9 o'clock, and I've got another opening at 1.30 tomorrow. Which one will work best for you so I can make sure I can take care of this and I can put, put, you, put your mind at rest that you're going to know you're taken completely aware of all the options that are important to you, especially your extended health care options. Tuesday, Wednesday, great. Okay, bye. You can do that. You can book the appointment. But, you know, the thing is, you can also do this. So if you're working at direct mail leads and you call them and they don't answer, just save the message again. Hey, Karen, this is Don. I'm a licensed professional XYZ company in the area. You ought to have that memorized by now. Hey, I need to talk to you as soon as possible regarding some important extended care, op extended health care retirement options regarding your Medicare. Here's my number. Call me back before five today. Otherwise, I assume you want me to drop by this week. Goodbye. And just all you got to do is go back that, leave that message again. So you see where I'm coming from as we go through this. You're in control of what you're doing. You've got a strategy to work each type of lead, which is important. You first of all got to have the right mindset that leads are not sales. People don't want quotes. People want to know about their needs. If they start asking you questions, you're out of control. You need to take control by asking the questions. You notice I ask a lot of questions. And the more I ask you, you want Tuesday or Wednesday? Bob, did you remember getting a book or not? Yes or no? Bob, do you have a minute? I don't. All that stuff is putting you in control of the conversation without starting to blabber about, well, we got an A-rated company and, 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 uh, and our plan F is really good. And, and you start going to all of that before you've got the right audience and the right, you got to be in the right situation in the home or on a, con on a phone call where you really got some time and energy. Exposed. You just start talking about all that stuff before you draw the right picture. It looks like an amoeba, if you remember that from biology. It kind of like, there's no form to it. It just moves all around the place. You've got to create a very straight line, straight picture, short, simple. Don't make it complicated and make it non-insurance. Non-insurance, you're a marketing person until you get to the kitchen table. You are a marketing person. That's part of our training program we call Jumpstart. You're a marketing person. You have to market your way in with the lead. You don't sell your way in with the lead. And when you get in the house, you make leads out of leads. How do you do that? By asking questions all the way through your sales process. Okay? So if I were in the house and you finally get there or you're on the phone and you start the conversation in the warm-up, I usually say, oh, by the way, Mr. Jones, how long have you guys lived here? Oh, about 30 years. Boy, you must know a lot of people in this area. Hey, i got to ask you an important question before we get together. And I have three prospecting cards made up of neighbors that are seniors that I got off my list. And I got them one in the same area, same block. Chances are 90% they're going to know them. I said, you wouldn't know Karen and Bill Shaninsky, do you? Yeah, we play bingo with them. When we used to play bingo, we used to go to Branson. You know, they're all confined like we are. Are they nice people? Yeah. Why? I'm going to be calling on them. I just wanted to, I just want to know if you knew them. Oh, yeah, they're lovely people. And you tell Bill we said hi. I said, I sure will, because they're going to be interested. I know they've responded. You don't know Pete and Judy Wilson, do you? Oh, yeah, they're, they're just about a block down also. They are, how do you, boy, all the, all, they're all the people we know. Hey, look, I really appreciate that. Why don't we go to the kitchen table? Or why don't we start, Bob? Let me start going over and see if how I can help you. I'm looking to pick names up every part of the process I can. In the warm-up, if you have a short fact finder or information gathering tool, if you have, and then at the end, when you say goodbye, and when you say thank you for your time, if you didn't sell them or did sell them, when you get the policy coming back for delivery, and when you set up your appointments to come back on their birthdays and anniversaries, I'm trying to make leads out of leads. I want to leave that house with four, five, six, seven, eight different people that they have known and told me they know something about them. I'm looking for those leads. And so I've got eight or nine that we're going to do a do on referred leads. There's like eight or nine places you can look for them. And I'll show you that in another session. So I know I've given you a lot of information. So I hope you're getting the, the, the basic thing. Now, there's one other kind of lead that comes up that you may or may not get access to. 
But date of birth. Birthdays are important leads. 65-year-old has a birthday for being 65 and has a birthday because it's Medicare. They got a dual birthday at 65 that year. So it's a great approach for life insurance. It's a great approach for the health insurance. It's a great approach because the excuse is beautiful because you're calling and remember excuses. I'm giving you excuses, Medicare and you book. I'm giving you excuses, your birthday, you're turning 65, you, 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 uh, your policy lapsed, uh, you got a rate increase, you got a conversion from term to whole life, you got a lapsed benefit off one of your riders, your grandchildren are turning you know, 10 and 12, your mortgage, all these are excuses. So if you can start excuses, you let me put it this way, if you can start a conversation with a stranger with a good excuse, you're going to generate a lot of appointments. But if you can't come up with good excuses, marketing excuses, you're going to struggle getting appointments because you won't focus on marketing. You're going to try to focus on product. Product does not get their attention. Trust me. Most of the times they give me a quote. Oh, that's too high. Why don't you send me some information? They're taking you and telling you what to do as the professional with no background on insurance whatsoever. A thimble full of knowledge. And they're able to direct your attention and tell you what to do. So I, I don't I don't get I don't know how that works, but I sure wouldn't let them do that to me. So questions control things. So now they got a birthday. What's your approach? Could be, hey, Karen, my name's Don. Listen, I just had to call you. Uh, did you get you ever getting that government booklet the other day? You know, the red, white, blue? No. You probably know. Well, it's called the Medicare and you book. You know what? I thought since you got two birthdays this year, for sure you'd get the book. That's how I changed that. What do you mean two birthdays? Well, you got a birthday normally coming up. And when is that? That's August. Okay, that's your regular birthday, Ms. Jones. But by the way, you also got the turning, you also now are eligible for Medicare. That's another birthday. And it's one of the best birthdays ever because you got some special, special privileges you'll never get again having that birthday, having that, that Medicare birthday. Because it's really is going to allow you He's going to give you access and a benefit of the doubt for all your health. Whether it's in good health or bad health, you've got a great birthday to celebrate. Focus on income replacement if you want. You can focus on life insurance if you want, if you want to do the Medicare. You say, Ms. Jones, the reason I'm, the reason I'm asking you about the Medicare in your book, by the way, uh, you were going to go for your rights, options, certain entitlements. And we want to talk to you about your extended health care and retirement benefits. Can I ask you a question? Have you already exercised your option when you turned 65? When you turn 65, do you know you have an option to replace your fixed income that you could lose up to 55% if you or Bob pass on? There's a special senior program. Did you talk to anybody about that yet? No, good. I'll bring it up with you when we get together. Now, is there anybody else in your household for Medicare? Boom, boom, go back and forth. So you can do a lot of different things. I'm just brainstorming with you today to show you how you need to take a lead apart, how you need to look at those opportunities that are all around you. How, when you meet a person, there's so many ways to explore some common denominators. And the, the phone approach, the appointment approach with the phone, whether it's the door, I, even when you do seminars again, fill your mind with good excuses to start conversations. This is the key thing to make leads. Leads cannot work without excuses. Lead is just a name on a piece of paper, an address maybe. So, so don't keep focusing on that. Focus on the fact these people are 65 or 66 or 67 or 60. Focus on the, it's a person I'm dealing with. So when I'm dealing with a person, I have to make up excuses. Like a kid, when they want to go out and play in the air, Dad, I want to go out. Why do you want to go out? Well, because I want to play baseball. Okay, you're okay, go ahead. You got to make excuses. Judy, why, uh, Karen, how come you're wearing lipstick? Well, but I'm doing that because all the girls in school are wearing lipstick. Is that a good excuse? Not too good. You have to come up kids. When you were children, you made great excuses why you need your mom to buy something, why you need your mom to take you out, why you need to go on vacation, why you need to go to the mall. There's excuses all day long. You should be a trained excuse maker. I'm giving you excuses. There's a health care crisis. There's an accelerated health care crisis, retirement crisis. covers all the products you could ever sell. There's an accelerate, and you got advertising by every day. They're publishing when people are dying now. They give you death certificates. Look at the, every time you turn on your phone, turn your phone on. It's going to tell you how many people died today, how many people got COVID-19 today, how many people went in the hospital today. You don't think the stars are right for us to be making these calls. They're, they're, the timing 
the timing for us is outstanding from a standpoint looking at that. We're not trying to be morbid or anything like that, but the timing is, is super upon us. Now, with the time I got left, take a drink of water. I hope you got some questions because I love questions. There's also a policyholder strategy. For those of you that have policyholders, we can spend all kind of time, and I'm just going to briefly go over. Let me tell you what a characteristic in my mind of a good lead is. Uh, and, and to a policy owner. Know you and trust you. Is that good? You bet it is. You know them and they know something about that, you know, something about them and their personal information. You know they own something, don't own something, got an idea of their house, you got some idea where they live, some idea of their family, their kids, their health. You know a lot. Those are hot leads. Those are no longer just a name and address with an excuse to start a conversation. These are people. These are upgraded. These are way up on the uh, on the pyramid of good leads. They bought from you in the past. Wow, that's a super good lead. Establish some type of relationship. You're contacting them two to three times a year. If you call them, they would call you back. They'd call you back. They are helping you build your practice. They're retiring you. They're buying your house and your car. These are valuable people. You worked hard to get them. Those should be the source of your best leads. If they trust you, you trust them. Why wouldn't they broadcast if they were happy with your service? That's like a carpenter doing a good job, and you'll tell everybody else about the carpenter. Same basic concept. So those are great leads. So the policyholders, if you have any right now, I'll tell you what, I I, I don't know if you have any. If you don't have any, uh, got it. But, <clears throat> excuse me, there's different types of, of lead types. There's suspects, cold contacts. There's prospects, cold contact with some information. And there's policyholders, which is a warm call and clients. So you have that. So you know that's going up the ladder. So when you have that, what is your strategy right now? If you have policyholders, how many times have you talked to them since January when this pandemic started? How many times you just call them up and ask them if they're okay? How many times have you talked to them, period? How many times you call them up and say, hey, I've been looking through your, your, your information here, and I know it's the most important time in our lives right now to make sure you're safe and protected. I've been going over this and I've got some gaps I've looked at in your coverage and I want to tell you about them because I don't want to be blindsided. You say, Don, you should have told us about this because this is a time everybody's taking a deeper look and make sure that they're able to go to a hospital if they need to and making sure that they're going to pay their bills if they have to. And, and, and I need to do this with you. So there's that you can have that kind of straight conversation with them because they trust you. So, you know, if you got a lot of policyholders, there's another strategy. So if you got a lot of them, uh, you can come back and just say, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm going to go back here. I'm sorry. I got messed up on my slides. Apologize. I'm not a slide, much of a slide guy here. Let's see. I've got 11. Uh, we'll go 12. We'll go 13. Okay. I would say you can mail a third of them, your top clients. When you got more than one policy, mail them. Postcard. Hey, take it. You mean, I'm sorry. I would mail my bottom third or I just send them a postcard. Let them know you're still concerned about them. Maybe there's some people you didn't close. Uh, you could call those people if you wanted to. You, you, you could uh, you could call your best ones up, the third of those. You could mail the ones that are in the middle that kind of got one policy. So your clients you'd call. You could mail your policy holders, and the ones you have the last third, you go see them. And they're in the area. But you can have a strategy. That don't have what you use. But you have got some way to look at your files and say, i got to go through all my files, okay, a couple times, since January, should be going through them a couple times because people may be healthy today or not healthy tomorrow. May not have COVID, may have it tomorrow. May be hospitalized, may not be. Somebody may pass away. Those people, unfortunately, passing on today, where they don't even have barely insurance. They don't even have final expense insurance. These are, these are times right now that we need to come out of our cocoon and really get active at all these things. Um, and, and again, I look at everything as an opportunity, an excuse to have an opportunity to talk to somebody. Um, you know, we already talked about this. The group that have more than one policy, I mean, that's a client. You know, if you ask them, they got more than one policy and you're talking to them at least once or twice a year, that's a client. That's the best possible thing you could have. When you have a client, not just a policy, when you have a client, that call can be, hey, Bob, it's Don. How are you and Karen doing? How's the, hey, how's everything? When I call my friend, hey, how's it going? The kid's okay. Gee, is everything all right here? Hey, did Johnny graduate yet from college? Hey, listen, I got I got something I got to talk to you about. Oh, sure. That's the phone call. It's called the conversation. That's the kind of calls you get to. That's why you're pushing 
to get a person with more than one policy in that house if they have the need. Because the more needs you can solve for them, they're not going anywhere. When they have one policy, there's a 10 to 12% a year chance that they're going to switch to somebody else to buy the other products. If you're not talking to them two to three times a year or sending them a mail or calling them up or giving them an email two to three times a year, you have an orphan. You do not have a policyholder. That's an active agent with an orphan client. There's orphans of the type. This is an orphan, this is an orphan policy holder because they really don't have an active agent. They got somebody just taking the commissions. So you got to really establish that and make that difference. You're not bothering them, especially now. I'm telling you, I'm talking to the mailman. I try to talk to the neighbor. I talk to the weeds. We've been confined to seniors. We're looking to talk to people. So this time to get up, get out and go talk to somebody. Talk to them on the phone. Talk to somebody. All right. That's a lot I've given you. I don't know if I didn't address a certain type of lead or a certain type of approach to that lead. But I, I would like to take a breath right now. If you guys can open up your mics, if we can unmute them, I'd sure like to get a chance to uh, talk a little bit about that and give me a little break on talking and just maybe answer your questions. Does anybody have any questions uh, at this point? I didn't look at the chat. don't know how to do much of that. But I thought we would go back here and talk about some of this stuff. Jace, is there a way we can do that? Uh, Don, it looks like... If they raise their hand, we can certainly open their mic. I don't see anyone raising their hand yet. Okay, there's a chat, eight people in the chat thing. I don't know what the chat says. I don't know what the chat messages are. Can I look at that? Can I look at the chat? No. Does anybody have any questions on any of the stuff I've covered? Uh, we did have uh, a couple questions, Don, uh, earlier which was, uh, you know, should should agents be purchasing lists? Where do they go purchase those lists? Which, of course, we can help out with because we do have some lead vendors that uh, do that. Um, you know, so maybe talk a little bit about uh, uh, also scripts. Do you have scripts available? Which we do at Insurance Advisors Direct. We've created some. Do you have some as well, Don? Yeah, and the scripts I have are all in our training material, and they're in there, and uh, – if there's something that if you have our training material, I always tell people, uh, I'll give you my phone number. When you have our training material, you can call me. And if there's something I can help you create, I have somewhere in a file. I will. I, I have over a thousand different scripts. And on the tapes, there's probably, I don't know, I can't remember, six, seven, eight of them. And I use the ones that currently are working the best. I mean, modify those, but I don't have any anything else that's uh, not proprietary. But if you go back in, I can help you build one if you want me to work with you. Jason's got some. Our training material that we're going to offer to you here in a minute has them on there too. What what about questions regarding uh, success with direct mail? I get that all the time. Jason, I know you've run programs for direct mail and people will go out there and they'll say, hey, I got 10, 20 cards back. I didn't get any sales. Uh, this didn't work. That, and I mean, that that I understand how terrible that is. But I will tell you, on direct mail should be, if you get a hold of that person, you should be getting appointments with one out of two. You should you should be able to set an appointment with one out of two of those people and send a card back. Yeah. If you're doing uh, yeah. And just to add to uh, you know, something Don had mentioned. So when it comes to scripts, you know, of course, uh, Don has some great ones that have been used and and uh successfully uh perfected over the years. Uh insurance advisors direct, we've created a number as well. And the other thing, too, and this goes uh, into the whole lead topic, is if you've watched some of our sessions a couple of weeks ago on marketing, you know, we talk all about how important marketing is, proper marketing, and not just using tactics, but having a full marketing strategy. So some of the things that play an important role in the full scope of marketing is not only uh, lists or direct mail leads. But there's a lot of, uh, of other things that go into it that make it a true strategy. So if you have a need for uh, whether it be scripts or marketing pieces or postcards or just uh, handouts for different uh, conferences or maybe you do uh, live events or maybe you're a consultant for uh, like maybe you're the Medicare outlet for a financial planning company or a number of other uh areas that you may be in front of your potential prospects, we have full kits, full sales and marketing pieces. 
we can take those pieces, we can customize them. We have a whole marketing and graphics team here that can put your logos on there. They can put your contact information. We can really customize it to your needs and your purpose uh, and get those too. So if you're contracted with Insurance Advisors Direct, that's again, one of the other uh, opportunities that we offer uh, to our partners. Yeah. I, I, as I would say to you, these guys, I've known Jason a long time and, and uh, a, um, IED, and they do a great job as opposed to some other IMOs, FMOs that might be out there. I would encourage you to, to take advantage of the resources. Uh, and, and what we have available to you, I've got the screen right now, is a heck of an offer because normally if you go to my website, leadguru.com, I think these are $119 a piece. Uh, they're $99 for both of them by either one the first one is more like a bachelor's course it's all about prospecting leads don runji live it's all about it's all about that it comes with a workbook you can customize the workbook second one is like an advanced approach is when you're in the house or really into the sales presentation this is the one that i call the master's degree because it teaches you the key questions to ask how to make leads out of leads how to multiply your leads i really believe that that whether you sell a person or not you should walk out of that house 90% of the time with more leads than you walked in with because it's a multiplication exercise. You can win by walking out with leads even if you don't have a sale because it'll make your job easier and easier. So if you're really working on that premise, that mindset that we talked about, your mindset is just not to make a sale. You didn't lose because you didn't make a sale, but you picked up five or six or seven or eight or nine or 10 other leads. And I always ask you, how many referrals you get a week? You know what an answer I get? across the board, but all the time I've been at this, two to three, two to three. We got neophyte agents getting 10 to 15. And we got people in the business, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 years, getting two to three referrals. I'm saying you, you, there's something in your process that needs to be changed. So these are the kind of things you get into with the advanced approach. And so take advantage. I mean, 99 bucks for seven hours of training, that's pretty inexpensive. Just divide 99, seven hours of training. It's a lot of training for $99. And you'll use it for years. So that that's our, our offer to you guys today, a special through uh, Jason's office that we're making. And uh, I think that and this is how you do it. You go to my website, leadguru.com. Pardon my turban I have. That's a younger picture. Go to the product tab and you take Don Runji Live, which is the bachelor's. Advanced approach is the master's. If you want to buy one, it's Guru 69 either product. If you want to buy both, it's Guru 99. Pretty simple. 69 or 99. So do that by all means. All right, Jason, anybody else in the chat box? Any any chat box questions you guys can see? The Kayla, the Kayla or anybody that you need me to answer? Or we got some people still on here? Yeah, don't be shy. Looks like no questions yet. Looks like we've answered uh, the questions in the chat box. No one is raising their hand. Uh, again, we can individually mute you. So if you have a question, we'll hang on here for just another minute and see if we can answer any of those. And I know all of you probably noticed that uh, we had quite a few slides on here we didn't get to. Most of those slides will be covered in next week's or in two weeks presentation, Don. Um, this uh, invitation to sign up with the Lead Guru, uh, we will send this out to everyone. This will also be located. If you go to our YouTube channel, you can see the recording of this. And in the drop down menu, you'll also be able to uh, click to Don's website uh, and you can use these codes there as well. Hey, Jace, question of you. You've been mm -hmm. at this enough years. You face all these kind of things. We've covered a bunch of different lead types today, uh, you know, different categories of different types of leads. What do you see the biggest challenge? I know you guys are great at product training and you do a lot more in all the other areas. But what do you what do you guys most one of the most common things from the guys and gals that do business with you? What's some of the common stuff if you had to sum it up and say, here's one thing we get a lot. We get a lot of this or we get a lot of that from the questions from the agents or concerns, especially when it comes around direct mail. I know that's a big one. I talk to the vendors and they all say, Why don't the agents reorder? Yeah. I get uh, that. That's a great point. I think that uh, your your comment there is exactly what we hear consistently, and that's the challenge is I think most agents don't have a budget or don't set a budget. And they also don't have a true marketing strategy. What they feel is a strategy, and we went through this in a, a few weeks ago in one of our marketing training meetings, is most people use tactics and think it's a strategy. 
So they send a thousand mail, mail drop through one of our partners, like Target Leads. Um, they spend $450, $500. They get a few lead cards back. Those don't work well. And they say lead cards don't work. And then they look for the next lead source. And then they get an email or a LinkedIn invitation from a, uh, a call center or through a lead vendor that generates them online. And they say, well, let's try that. And then they uh, try that and they might get a couple sales. So they stick with it for a couple more rounds. And then that dries up and then they go on to the next lead source. And so there's never really a strategy. It's constantly trying tactics. And when they fail, they move on. And so one of the things we encourage agents to do is be consistent. Uh, all of these strategies or tactics work, but you have to do them consistently. Uh, you can't try them once and give up because we have leads. Uh, we have agents that work direct mail all the time and they do have the occasional drop that just does not pull well. Or even if it pulls OK, for whatever reason, the persons that are part of that response just don't engage with them after the fact. And even those agents that know they work well sometimes get discouraged, but that's OK. We move forward. We do the next drop. And then the next drop, lo and behold, the poll is the same, but they now make twice the amount of sales they're used to. So it all balances itself out. You just have to be consistent, set a budget, uh, work with our team on what lead source might work best for you, because some of you do things better in different ways. You know, some of you are better at virtual and phone sales. We have a whole system set up for you. Some of you are better at face-to-face -face kitchen table sales. We have a system for you, uh, whether it be direct mail, social media. So we can help you with all those sources and help you become an expert. But you have to have a plan. You have to have a budget. And then we'll help you be consistent with it. Oh, I love your answer. And, and, and I'll add something that's a little, little different. And, I, and just everybody's got choices. If you really wanted to do this, you could do this. You could mail that thousand people and never have to mail again. If you really follow the things I've talked to you about today, you can't get through a thousand names. You don't need a thousand names. There's companies that hire agents and today they got to do a project 300. And they build their whole career off with 300 people they don't know. You've got a thousand names that are definitely your target market. And when those people do the 400, they don't have a target market. It's all over the place. You have that target market and you do the strategies I've talked with you about today and get our material. You build that. You don't need to do anything more than work those thousand names. And you won't work all thousand names and you'll build your business, period. Because I can tell you companies, the boutique companies out of New York, they have the agents got 300 names of people they don't even know called a Project 300 and they build a career. Off of those and are all over age nine to age 90. You have targeted marketed names and addresses, some with and without phone numbers. And if you have the right strategy to work through those 9,000 names before you do anything else and use some of the stuff I gave you today very quickly, but in depth on the, on the material you can buy, you're the, you really don't have to <laughs> ever, ever worry about dropping mail again. But that's your call. So I just want to make sure you understand that there's a lot of ways to skin this cat, as they say. And I don't mean that any way from animal rights activist, just a figure of speech. And Jason's 100 percent right. They can guide you through these things. And I'm just going to throw this into you because, you know what? I didn't have 500 bucks to spend. I was broke. I was broke. And I didn't mail because I was broke. But I knew how to make excuses to talk to people. And then what I did is once I got a group of names I could actually work, I never worked any more names. I just worked off those names. So a thousand with the right demographics, you, you can't get through those thousand. The best leads are not the ones that responded, by the way. Let me tell you, the best leads are not the ones that send the cards back in. We proved that through testing. Sometimes they're so ill, they couldn't buy anything. I'm not saying it's bad or good. It's just the way the world is. The other people that are in there, they know who you are because you mailed them. They just said, come find me. I'm home. So you got to understand, but I can't brag on all that today. I'm back in my training material. So take our training material, embrace it, and combine it with Jason's. And if you can't make it after that, uh, then you and I are going to have a prayer service. But I want to thank you for taking your time out today. Thank Jason. Thanks, ID, AID. And, and I really think everybody here stay safe. Stay home if you need to stay home. And uh, I hope I get to see you guys again and tell your friends and family about our next war, uh, webinar. 
and have some questions ready, man. We're ready for you guys. Jason, thank you. Thank everybody. Have a great day. Thank you, Don. Again, uh, we appreciate Don joining us today. Uh, always a, a refreshing take on uh, lead generation and how to properly work those. And Don makes a lot of great points, you know, with some of his system and, and the approach he's taught agents for, you know, 30, 40 years now, uh, you can ultimately uh, generate leads upon leads uh, with his system and strategy. And since we know that's always a big concern to agents, that's something that we hear on a constant, regular basis. That's why we wanted to bring you uh, these topics and have Don address some of these with you. And again, we're going to continue this on our next uh, third part to this. Uh, and we'll see. Don, he uh, comes up with a lot of material. Maybe we'll turn this into a four-part, five-part series, but uh, we'll see. So we again, thank you for joining us on this Friday. Uh, we hope we've given you some ideas to take away and to implement into your business. We would love to engage with you. Uh, call us, give us a call, talk with some of our sales team. All of us on the sales team and Insurance Advisors Direct, uh, we've been in the field. We've made a living selling these products, and we can really help you work through the questions, the challenges that you may be facing to get you to that next level and help you succeed in whatever market, whatever product uh, that you may be looking to represent. You know, we're a full service national marketing organization. We cover all life and health products uh, with a little extra emphasis on the senior space, uh, mostly Medicare, uh, Medicare Advantage plans in that space. So again, our team is well equipped to help you. Uh, and we certainly look forward to the chance to do business with you uh, and help you to grow your business. So please reach out. Uh, we'll be following up with everyone with a thank you email. Uh, we'll give you some additional information on Don's program if you want to sign up. And please join us. We do these webinars every Friday on a variety of topics. Next week, we'll be uh, introducing the Bankers Fidelity team and the Bankers Fidelity portfolio of products. And then the week following, we'll have Don with us again to do the third part of this series. So again, we appreciate the attendance. Uh, thank you for your uh, business and uh, for your partnership. And we wish everyone a great weekend and look forward to working with you in the future.